about a week ago I filmed a video and it was basically just to document a new charger that I had received and to see how it worked and it didn't work too good. It was uh, this GT Power A6-12, a 200 watt 6 amp 6S capable charger from Value Hobby out of Illinois. The specs looked really good on it, the price was good. Uh, I was very detailed in that video and showed the problem. If you're not familiar with that and you're curious what the problem was, you're more than welcome to look at that video from about a week ago. I ordered a replacement charger of the same type, hoping that this one works. And if this one doesn't work, then I'm sending them both back. If this one does work, then I'll probably buy another one of these to have two. Um, well, I'll, I'll exchange this one to have two. Up until now, um, I've had a couple of Hobby King chargers that didn't last. I'm not going to buy Hobby King anymore. To hold me over after the Hobby King chargers until I got these nice chargers, I decided to try uh, an X charger, which is made by GT Power, the same company. This thing's been great. Problem is, it's only 50 watts at 6 amps. So it takes a while to charge for bigger batteries. Uh, bigger meaning um, like this 4S. 5000 nanotech compared to a 2200 3S nanotech. Huge difference. And these you can do pretty good on the little 50 watt charger. Uh, but these big bad boys right here that run my boat, um, just not enough. It takes too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this charger up and we're going to do this all in one video shot and we're going to take the new charger and uh, a couple of I don't want to test it on this. This is a brand new $62 battery right here. I'm not going to test a new charger on that battery, and I'm not going to test it on these new little 2200 nanotechs either. Instead, I've got a couple of Turnagees out there that are 3S 2200s, and I'm going to charge them at 12 amps on two of them in parallel. They're both in storage mode right now, and uh, we're going to see if the new charger can sustain uh, charging to 3S parallel at uh, 12 amps. Now, this charger, when I first opened it up right out of the package when it was sent to me a little over a week ago, the very first thing I noticed is I could smell electrolyte, which if you've ever had a, a capacitor rupture or a surface mount um, cap that, uh, that leaked or blew, then you probably know what electrolyte smells like. And this charger had that smell before I even used it. But the very first test on this charger when I opened it was I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to charge four batteries at one time to test it out. I had two that were charged and two that were at storage. So the two that were charged, I put them onto uh, discharge mode on this charger to bring them down to match the other two that, I, that uh, I was going to charge. So I could charge all four at the same time, but you know when you charge parallel, you have to get the voltages uh, relatively close within a couple of a tenths of a volt to each other. So. Uh, the very first test this charger had was to bring two 3S2200 LiPos down to storage voltage and within the first minute the resistors burned out for the discharge circuit and it went from a 25 watt discharge to about a 5 watt discharge so it lost about 20 watts of its discharge capacity. And next thing I know, after that the next test I did on it, it would not balance, it would not charge the pack and, and shut off. It ran for two hours and never finished the pack all the way. It sat on zero amps for the last hour and didn't put any more milliamps into the pack and never finished balancing it. After more thought, the conclusion I came to was that the discharge resistors are also used during the balance cycle and applies um, variable amounts of discharge resistance. Um, to the pack, which is how the packs balance. In other words, you got three cells in one of these packs, so the cell with the highest voltage gets a little bit of resistance applied to it till the other two cells catch up with it and constantly adjust that in real time. So it's using the discharge resistors a little bit to add some resistance to the higher voltage cells to let the lower voltage cells catch up. So once the discharge problem happened on this, it caused damage to it that would not let it balance properly. Now, I need this charger for this weekend. My boat club season is coming to an end. It's um, a little after you know mid-October here, and we don't have too many more meets before it's going to be too cold and the season's over. So I'm desperate to get something that I can charge these 4S packs with really quick at the lake. And rather than 
try to simulate the exact same test with this one that I did that one by adding uh, resistance to it right away and doing a discharge cycle on it. I'm not going to do that because I don't, right now, I don't want to prove that this one might do the same thing. Instead, I would rather preserve it and use it as strictly a charger to get me through the next week or two on these bigger 4S packs for my boat. So what we're going to do today is we're going to open this new charger up, we're going to take it straight out, and we're going to charge two 3S Turnigy 2200s that are at storage voltage right now, and we're going to charge those at 12 amps in parallel, and basically just test the ability of this charger to do its rated amperage at that voltage as it is spec. The specs do look really good on the charger, and it's a nice looking charger. It, uh, it has touch uh, capacitive touch buttons instead of pressure sensitive buttons, so these buttons don't click or anything when you press them. They, uh, they're kind of like a touch screen on a smartphone. They just sense the capacitance in your body and uh, respond to that. So we're going to open this up right here on camera. camera is in fact still running right okay it looks like we are oh, like I said the other one when I opened it the first time I could clearly smell electrolyte in it from the get-go before it was powered on so let's see if we I don't notice that smell with this one. Nope. I do not smell that. So we're off to a better start already. I want to make sure the cords have a wide enough wide to make it to the battery terminals because we're going to go straight out to the car. I'm taking the camera and everything out right now. I've got the balance plate out there waiting. So here we go. Position the camera here. Get the tripod leveled. Bring the view up just a little bit to show you what's going on. Okay, and we're still recording, right? Yes. Okay, what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna go ahead and plug the charger in. Now I like to plug the positive in first. It causes less of a spark plug the negative in last. Okay, the charger did power up. And we're going to go ahead and that came up on a LiPo charge at 12 amp. We're going to go ahead and tell it to go into balance, LiPo balance mode at 12 amp at 3S. We're going to go and connect our batteries to 2200 3 cells, 3S's. We're going to go ahead and connect the power, main power leads first, which is what you always do when you parallel charge. That allows the cells to equalize. Then you plug your balance taps in to that one and to this one. So we have both batteries plugged in to 3S's. We're going to now Connect the four millimeter bullets to the new GT power charger. And then we're going to connect the balance lead to the charging plate. And here we go. We've got 12 amps selected. 11.13S LiPo balance. We're going to press and hold start. Battery check. Confirm. And let's see what happens here. Let's see if I can actually catch the read the screen. Looking good so far. 
the fan is not kicked on yet. If we arrow down, our internal temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. That's great. Charge rate looks great. over there. Okay, we're looking good so far. I don't know how long I'm going to sit here and record uh, this, this screen, but uh, it's starting off good. I'll put it that way. Now the fan did kick on. It's pretty quiet, but uh, not bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and probably record for a couple minutes here just like this and talking a little bit along the way because what I want to do is I want to check the internal temperature of the charger it seems to be bouncing between 11 to 12 amp but uh, more or less it's, it's full in 12 amp now considering those packs were at uh, storage voltage it sure reads 12.6 awful fast at uh, 10 amp Let's look at the individual cells. We got cell 1's 405, 406, cell 2's 407, 408, cell 3's 406, 47. Seems to be reading a high total pack voltage compared to what the cell counts are. But it may be applying resistance to the two individual cells to balance them at this point. But the voltage shows 12.6. Something seems kind of weird about that. And the amperage is dropping down. 9.9 .9 amps. It's cranking the current in three minutes and it's put in about 550 milliamp. Amperage is dropping, probably due to the constant current, constant voltage uh, peaking algorithm that's used for LiPo batteries. So we're only about 12.2 something, 12.3 something an actual pack voltage according to the individual cell voltages a little less than 12.3 but yet the charger is showing total pack voltage of 12.6 so there's a three tenth of a volt discrepancy in what uh, in what our uh, pack voltage is shown here versus if you add the individual three cells together not quite sure what to think of that at this point that seems kind of odd Amperage is rolling down a little bit due to constant current, constant voltage. And uh, it is zapping some current into those cells pretty quick here. Let's look at internal temps. Hundred and five internal temperature. So we started off at seventy-eight and a little over four minutes into the charge, we're at 105 degrees now. We're going to go ahead and record a little longer. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and set the camera back here. And uh, when I edit this video later, I will speed, do a fast forward on this section, but I'll still do it all in one shot. And uh, I'm going to be back in a few minutes and we'll check the internal temperature again. Right now, the charge time is at uh, 4 minutes 55 seconds. Oh, I interrupted the charge cycle. My finger, I was feeling heat sink for uh, heat, and I accidentally, accidentally pressed the damn button. We're 
doing good. And it looked like it put about uh, about 1,200 milliamp into the two batteries. We're going to restart the charge cycle here because I messed up. Like I said, these buttons are capacitive touch. They're not pressure touch. If you just barely so much as touch them with your skin, it triggers the buttons, and that's what happened. I, ch I was checking heat seek for heat, which it doesn't feel too bad. It's about uh, about 67 degrees outside right here right now, about 67 to 70. And uh, we restarted the charge cycle, but just keep in mind, anything you barely touch the buttons, they are cool and high tech, and they they are nice, but they are sensitive. Just the palm of my hand barely touched the one of the buttons and stopped the charge cycle. So we're restarted the charge cycle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the internal temperature. Internal temperature is showing 82 degrees right now. Now it was 105 before and the reason was is because the amperage was a lot higher. As it fills these batteries up, the constant current, constant voltage algorithm that's used on LiPos gradually rolls the amperage down as it approaches its max voltage. So we started off at, you know, bouncing 11 to 12 amp, and now we're down three to 3.4 amps, but we're still showing 12.60 volts. Let's look at what the cells are showing. Cell 1 is 417, cell 2 is 416, cell 3 is 415. When this pack is done, I'm going to uh, verify um, the 4.20 cell top with a second voltage meter to see how well it actually peaks each individual cell at 4.20. I've got uh, I bought several of these little checkers over the years, and um, I've. I buy several at a time so I can pick the most accurate one. And I found this one particular brand that I bought a few of, and it even says that the test accuracy is plus or minus five thousandths of a volt. And they're damn right. It's uh, th this is remarkably accurate. And out of uh, out of like four or five of these that I bought, I picked the very best one compared to a to a calibrated fluke. And uh, this one was was the cherry right there. So. When this is all said and done, we're going to take this and, and probe the individual cells in those lipos and see if they match the 4.20 volt top off that this charger is going to stop at. Right now we're at 2.6 amps. Uh, we put another 155 milliamp into it, and we just round about 1200 milliamp uh, before I um, inadvertently touch the button on the charger while feeling the heat sink and shut it off. So once again, I'm going to step away from the charger, go ahead and let it finish. I'm going to hope that my cell phone doesn't run out of uh, memory or battery power while it's recording. And then when I edit this video, I will fast forward through the parts where I'm stepping away and just get right to the good stuff. So let's go ahead and let this thing charge and see if we can actually catch it all in one video shot um, with the charger peaking, shutting off, and then checking the voltages of the lipos. Actually, I just looked at my phone and it says battery's getting low. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right now and then I'll turn it back on once uh, once the charge is done and we'll verify the cell voltages. Okay, we're back again. Um, I'm having some problems here. I shut the video off because the battery was getting low on the phone and I've been charging these things since then. And we're going on 46 minutes of charge. And it's only put 51 milliamp into it. And it's trying to balance, and the amperage is showing 0, 0.0. And, well, we'll just show you here. Forty-six minutes, 51 milliamp into it. We're reading 0.0, .0 amps at 12.61 total pack volts. When I look at the individual cells, I see 4.24, 4.22, 4.19. What the hell's going on here? This charger seemed to have been working good, putting out the amperage it was supposed to, but um, trying to balance the cells, it's just, 
it seems sporadic. It just is not doing it. It should not take 47 minutes to only put 51 milliamp into the, to the battery and still not have it balanced. Seriously? What the hell's going on here? I don't know. Here we go again. Um, I let it run for about 50 minutes, which I just checked in a couple minutes ago and showed you guys a screenshot of the charger and how it's been running for about 45 minutes and only put 51 milliamp in. And uh, I went ahead and shut the charger off, pulled the packs off, and checked the individual cell voltages, and I did not like what I see at all. Once again, this is this is a very reliable tester. I've compared this to a fluke. It is very, very precise. Let's plug this in. Let's see if you guys can see it on the screen here. 423, 419, 422. So cells 1 and 3 are overcharged. But yet the charger never shut off. It was still trying to balance and it did not. Okay, let's check the other one since they were charging in parallel. So one, four two three, four one nine, four two two. Once again, exactly the same between the two packs. Cell one and cell three are overcharged. This charger is no good. This is not safe. It's a little hard on the light, but it's overcharging by that little bit. I'd rather have it be four point one nine, just a hair under, than to have it be even a hair over. So not too happy. It looks like this one's going back, and I think I'm going to give up on GT power, and I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy uh, an eye charger because this I'm not going to risk a 4S 5000 pack in my boat that I paid $62 for, and uh, I'm just not going to do that. I'd rather put the money into a charger and uh, have peace of mind knowing that I can continue to buy batteries over the years and not have to worry about it being damaged, uh, you know, batteries being damaged by a cheap charger. So, lesson learned, this is the second GT Power that I've tried, and I'm disappointed with it, that's all I can say. Oh, yeah, this charger is definitely going to be returned. I'm trying to give it benefit of the doubt. I took the two 3S packs and that I showed you that were overcharged by a little bit on cells 1 and 3, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and do my little Zippy 1000 for my little... Uh, lightweight airplane and uh, just do a balanced charge on it. It had 11.8 volts when I put it onto the charger and I started it at a 2 amp charge and within just a probably two minutes it showed the voltage at 12.6 volts when I just put it on at 11.8 and it was doing a 2 amp charge. The charge rate slowed down and put a total of 71 milliamps into the pack at 39 minutes and it's showing 12.62 volts so this is no good uh, it just cannot balance and once again I think it has to do with the resistor banks inside that um, the resistors just aren't draining off and bleeding off the individual cell currents to get them into balance and the charger can't complete its balance so this is my second one of these chargers and it's going back and I guess I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and buy an eye charger. Um, once again, I've got uh, I've got a charger, uh, another GT Power charger that I've had for a while. Um, not quite a year, but I bought it earlier this year. So I've, I've had it for this season, and I've used it this season. And if it wasn't for this boat using a big 4S5000 pack, I wouldn't be trying to buy... Um, uh, high power chargers for my lightweight planes this one does just fine but this charger here has no problems charging the two Turnigy 3S packs that you saw me trying to charge earlier and the 1000 3S pack that's charging right now out there that won't top off this GT Power X charger which is only a 50 watt 6 amp charger has no problem it's perfect as a matter of fact after it balances it's right on 4.20 sometimes 4.19 per cell but it, it's, it's always right on. Um, so 
There was the first one that I did the first video on that uh, burned up during a discharge, and then uh, it experienced um, the inability to finish a balance charge. And I blame that on the resistors burning out on the initial discharge that I did with it. But this new charger that you saw me clearly open, I did not do a discharge cycle on it. Didn't want to heat up the resistors. Instead, I went straight to a balance charge and uh, paralleling two 3S 2200 milliamp packs. I couldn't top them off. Uh, well, it wouldn't shut off to show a top off, and they were overcharged on cells one and three. And uh, this 1000 milliamp pack, as you can see, 71 milliamps still, zero amps running on 42 minutes, 12.62 volts. So we're going to set the camera back on its tripod right here. I'm going to go in and grab my individual cell voltage checker, and let's pull that pack off and see what the individual cells show. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shut the charge cycle off. You saw it run for 42 minutes. Milliamp didn't change in a few minutes. I showed you. Amperage shows zero. Voltage shows 12.62. Let's see what this little guy has actually got in him. Four one six, four one seven, four one seven. So see the display, the readout display is just is garbage. Um, it's not calculating voltage right. I don't know if it's uh, tolerance, bad tolerance resistors that they choose to use. Maybe they're using 10% resistors instead of 5% or 2%. But the charger software, the algorithm where it averages based on a known tolerance of a resistor, perhaps if they're using cheap resistors, they cannot get the algorithm right. Um, whatever the cause, uh, it's a $40 charger, 200 watts, it can do 12 amps. The specs sound great for the price, but in reality, um, you know, I, I can't recommend it. I really cannot. And uh, a word of warning to anybody who's trying some of these cheaper chargers, if it's not a Hyperion or an iCharger or an FMA Cell Pro, um, don't use a brand new LiPo on it to test it. Use Use a lipo that's that you know you got you got a little bit of use out of. So if it messes it up, you didn't just waste a brand new lipo. Like in the case of my 4S 5000 pack that I paid $62 for a single battery. Don't ever take a brand new nice battery like that and try a charger like this. Like I said, the other GT Power X charger that I have, the small black one that does 50 watts at six amps, has no problem topping these off and. At a 2C charge rate, it takes about 35 minutes, whether it be one of these 1000s or one of the 2200s. So, the batteries are fine. This is definitely a charger problem, and this is the second charger of this exact model, and I'm not going to try a third one. So, be warned, everybody. I hope this helps you guys out. Enjoy.